Landon McCarter here with Secure Agent Marketing. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes to shoot a couple sort of videos that uh, of topics that I'm getting uh, questions a lot from. So if you guys don't know, you know, we deal with thousands. We, I think we have 14,000 uh, final expense, Medicare, you know, life insurance agents in our in our database. And so we get questions every single day by the multitudes. And I, every time I can kind of notice a theme of questions, I really try to realize, okay, there's an appetite for this, so let's just go ahead and address it on a video. So today I want to discuss a topic that I think is really interesting that I um, want to walk through, and that is should you as a final expense or insurance, life insurance producer, should you be using social media, should you be using your personal page, um, or you should, should you be using your business page to make your engaging content? So first off, I want to kind of explain that they both have their place and let me try and explain what I, in my opinion, what you should be doing in 2019 and going into 2020. Now, before I give you this video and content, I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. I am not a licensed insurance agent. I do not have a book of business on the insurance um, front. I'm just the marketing guy that works with Cody on all his stuff and I just work with insurance producers all day long. I think today... You know, I've got um, six meetings with individual producers or large, you know, insurance, you know, IMOs or whatever it is. Um, and so I just kind of have my ear on the ground on what's going on in the, in the insurance world. So this is my opinion, but I'm going to give you my opinion on this. So one of the things that I believe is important for you guys as um, individuals is to really activate your personal social media page um, and use that as a business asset. Now, what I mean is is don't, don't always be selling. Don't be sitting there and like pitching your products all the time. Another mistake that I see uh, people do is I feel like they try to use fear as a tactic to incite like a call to action with some of their memes that they post or some of their content that they post. Like make sure it's positive. So like what I mean by that is is, is a big mistake is I think trying to, to say something like, you know, this person's you know, loved one passed away and they didn't have life insurance and I met with them a month ago and too bad for them. Obviously no one would say it in those words, but that's kind of the heart of what the message was and I don't think that's wise. I think you need to be positive and uplifting and communicating stories, doing Facebook Live videos with people that you've helped um, in a positive way. Try, try not to, to go down that negative path of like, of the fear-based sort of, uh, you know, look, you need to be protected or else kind of language. That's probably not ideal um, because there's enough of that negativity on Facebook. I would just rise above that if you can, um, you know, not just negativity on Facebook, but, you know, all social media. So what I try to do is I try to um, understand that my customers, I, I've always friend, I basically never uh, unfriend or defriend anybody. Um, I think I'm almost to 5,000 friends, which is the cap. Um, but until I get to 5,000, I'm pretty much just anybody that wants in. You can you can come in. Um, I I am immediately turned off if someone pitches me right off the bat or whatever, or tries to get me to partner with them or something, just like you guys would as well. So you know, one of the things that I'd like for you guys to try and work on on your personal sort of Facebook page is I think you should add your clients to your Facebook feed. I really do, because a lot of times these individuals, one of the things that we're fighting as um, you know Medicare or you know final expense or life insurance or whatever we're fighting that losing you know keeping business on the books and if you're starting to post things about your family and how you're coaching your son's basketball team and how you had an exciting family reunion and it's like you know if you can bring people along that journey of how you're a family person um, it kind of it, it kind of relates to those individuals and I feel like you're staying top of mind with them without actually having to like potentially email them you know, directly or reach out to them directly, et cetera. So I don't have any data to say those that are active on social media c tend to keep business on the books, but I believe that is the case and is true based on feedback that I've been given. And I believe that is something you should pay attention to. So I try to separate my social media posts into three main categories. Um, what I try to do is make sure that no matter what, I'm always exuding like fun and exciting things and showing behind the curtain of who I am as a person. An example, if you guys were to go to my Facebook feed um, last week, I think, or week before last, I got a jury summons. And that initial sort of, you know, jury summons is like, gosh, I gotta take a day, and it may take me a week to get through this jury. So my initial reaction was, how do I get out of this? Um, but as I started to, to think and reflect on that, um, I thought it was a good, important way to kind of show, really just share some insight on the whole experience and just 
help people understand that maybe haven't been into a jury summons situation how I was looking at the situation. And by doing that, I felt like I was able to show a portion of, of who I was as a person as well. And so I made like a pretty long, lengthy Facebook post about my experience with jury summons and my perspective on that. And I ended up getting quite the engagement on that actual Facebook post. And when you go through and you look through the people that watched my story that I posted to, went to Instagram, watched my story there, and actually engaged in the actual uh, Facebook post that I made, I bet you 40%, if not more than that, of people that actually liked and commented on that actual page was clients or people that I've done business with in the past or people that I would consider, you know, influencers and who I care that, you know, I want to be in front of, meaning I respect them. There's a mutual respect there. It's not just Uncle John and Cousin Nathan and, you know, Cousin Mark and all those guys did engage, you know, in my stuff, but a good 40-50% was clients. So I feel like by me allowing people to come in behind the curtain of who I am as a person and, and walking through I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a, a you know, a believer. Um, I make, you know, these, these posts that kind of show me as a person. So that's one core sort of pillar that my social media stands on. Another thing that I do quite a bit is I try to make people laugh from, I just feel like social media sometimes gets a bad rap for being negative. I mean, good grief. It, and it's about to get even more negative with 2020, with these elections coming. It's about to be a cesspool of negativity. And everybody, what's gonna end up happening is, is people are gonna kinda like get annoyed and start just looking at it less because it's about to be this horrible situation of the Democrats hating the Republicans, the Republicans hating the Democrats and Trump, all these debates, who won, who didn't win, it's about to be a nightmare, okay? And what I mean by nightmare is, is there's some people that like enjoy that dialogue and all that, but good grief, like raise your hand if you've uh, changed someone's mind on Facebook arguing. So I try to just stay as far away from that as I can and be short. If someone wants to call me out on anything, um, you know, then I'm usually pretty short with trying to defend myself and just kind of say, I guess you just unfriend me or whatever. Cause you know, so I try to like make people laugh. I do that by like posting memes and just kind of having fun. So, and then I also talk about business successes and the growth that we're seeing and the wins that we're experiencing. And just, I try to like keep it all positive. You know, like for instance, you know, there's, there's business struggles that sometimes I can, you know, potentially maybe share, but I'm always sharing the upside of that struggle that we went through. I'm never just using Facebook as a platform to vent. Now I made a huge mistake. Um, it was five, six years ago where I just used Facebook as like this platform. I think some people can end up, um, using a soapbox there because really if you were to think about it there's no other place for you to reach a thousand people than than your facebook feed right now like you couldn't just go reach a thousand people if you wanted to okay so what ends up happening is is subconsciously whether you realize it or not if you have a topic that you're passionate about you're usually going to go to facebook and project that um and i always try to like i'm not saying you got to be friends with everybody and you know even guys like grant cardone or whoever will say you know you need to have such a strong position that you repel half your audience and attract a, a, another half further um i'm okay with that i'm not saying that's wrong but i just don't think it's wise because i have people that i love and respect and care about deeply that are staunch on the other side of the aisle from where i was and that's great like i want to hear their opinions i want to hear their ideas i want to hear who they are as a person because they're not bad people and just because we disagree doesn't mean we have to like uh, you know butt heads especially on social media where everyone can see it you know so it's like you know I, I believe that you know I try to walk that line of being you know I don't want to be politically correct like in, in terms of like who I am as a person in one-on-one -on -one conversation is, is, is one thing but who I am on social media I try not to be very uh, like divisive because I feel like that doesn't help anybody and it only hurts like I've had some people say you know I'm doing business with you because I like you know your your pers personal perspective and that was when I was a little bit more um, armchair politician if you will um, but I'm sure I push people away as well and so I just try to be friends with a lot of people and and not anti anybody so that's how I would recommend using your social media as a individual insurance professional because the insurance business is a relationship game. The more people you get in front of, the more people you can uh, impact. And so on the flip side, I'm gonna shoot a next video on how to use your um, 
your uh, professional page as opposed to your personal page. So thanks for listening. I hope this is an okay format for you guys, a little more casual conversation of just my opinion. You know, like and comment um, if you if you agree, and for, feel free to comment if you disagree. I would love to have an open dialogue with you. So I um, hope you have a good afternoon. Have a great day, guys.